as people ate, the level in the soup would slowly drop. But the second they stopped eating, that level would imperceptibly start to rise again. Hey, welcome. This is the last existing bottomless soup bowl table. Now, uh, I've had it for the last four years in my garage. So we we're here back in my home. We had to pull out of the garage because it's no longer in the lab. It's sort of a, I consider it a national treasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what it is is we set this up so that we could feed people lunch without them realizing how much they're eating. Okay. So what we have are typical soup bowls. Now in the bottom of the soup bowl, what we've done though, we've drilled a hole and we've attached it to these reef, to this uh, food grade tubing. Mm -hmm. Now we've also drilled a hole to the table. So this tubing goes from the bottom of the bowl, under the table. Mm -hmm. See we have a, a valve right here and it, and it connects up into this big, big cauldron of soup here. So what we do is we pour six liters of tomato soup in here. Once we pull that handle lace underneath the table, it will fill up the soup bowl. Now this is the first table that was done. The very first table was done very basically like this. The other three tables we created had these pans actually in, in other rooms with a hole drilled through the wall and the tubes came through the other room so people could even see that there were pans there. And a person who sits down for lunch can eat and eat and eat. With every bite they take, that the level in that soup is going to go down just a little bit, just a little bit. But once they stop eating, it's going to imperceptibly rise again. It's going to imperceptibly rise to the point where they could eat for a day and a half, and they would never know the bowl's refilling, but they would also never hit bottom until six liters of soup was eaten. What we found is that the typical person eating out of a refillable soup bowl will eat 73% more soup than people eating out of normal bowls. But what's so powerful about it is that if we ask them if they're full, they go, no, how could I be full? I, I still have half a bowl of soup left. Of course I'm not full. And herein lies the problem, is our stomachs are very crude detectors of how much we've eaten. So as a result, we rely on other cues, the biggest one being our sight, to tell us how much we've had to eat. If there's still half a bowl of soup left in that bowl right there, I'm still hungry. One of the reasons our stomach tricks us, one of the reasons our, our stomach is a fairly crude measure, is that uh, we don't really pay much attention to it. None of us take a bite of soup and go, Am I full yet? We don't take another bite of soup and say, am I full yet? No, we typically wait till the soup bowl's empty, and then we say, am I still hungry? And if we are still hungry, at that point we refill the bowl. But what goes on is that there are a hundred things around us that are more worth us paying attention to than the amount of soup we're eating. There's our friends that we're talking with and laughing with. There's the television and the newspaper that we're reading. There's the hundred things we're thinking about that we need to do yet this afternoon. All of those distractions dominate the part of our brain that should be going, am I full yet? You know, what's so crazy is even though I think about this stuff 20 hours a day, I've written a hundred papers on it, we've done, done hundreds of studies, I will be just as fooled as a person that's never even heard of these results. It doesn't matter how smart you are. The biggest plate is going to be, it's going to fool the smartest person. The fattest glass will fool the smartest person into pouring more into it. That proximate, that nearby candy dish is going to fool the smartest person into taking twice as many candies than if it's just two meters farther away. The key to this 
the, the solution to all this is not through the power of the mind. No! The key is simply in changing the environment around us. Changing what we have in our kitchens so we mindlessly eat less. If big plates cause us to eat more, to serve more and eat more, don't have big plates. Use smaller plates. Or maybe we should live a life with less distractions. If we had lives that were a lot less distracting, a lot less stressful, we might not be fooled as much by these things. <laughs> but until that day magically happens in the future, I think we're better off changing our immediate environment than believing that we can do it through the power of the mind. Yeah.